China's COVID-19 death toll from Wuhan has been revised and increased by 50%. The new death toll stands at 3,869. Authorities say the new numbers now include fatalities that weren't properly reported during the early days of the outbreak, which began in Wuhan. But they've denied it's a cover-up. More now. More now with uh, Dr. Annelise Wilder-Smith from Lee Kong Chan School of Medicine at Nanyang Technological University. Uh, Dr. Wilder-Smith, uh, revisions to the death toll were perhaps uh, expected, but is the scale of the jump a bit of a surprise? It, it is not really a surprise to me, uh, and I would really thank uh, China for uh, being open about the data. You have to remember that capturing data depends on the availability of diagnostic tests, the healthcare system, and also where you do, where you capture the tests. So, as we all know, Wuhan was ground zero. So, although they swiftly and decisively built up the, the capacities to, to tackle this problem, initially they did not have diagnostic tests. So, those cases may have been missed in reporting. Furthermore, the reporting was basically done uh, on cases from certain hospitals and, and, and settings, and they may have missed the cases that died in, in, in the households or in old age homes, etc. So I think they updated those data, and now they've updated WHO on the estimated current deaths. So, Dr. Wildersmith, saying that, then, you know, various countries, they calculate the death toll differently. So, what's the most accurate way to do so? So, you've seen it also now in the UK that they were initially only reporting hospital-based deaths, and now they are also reporting deaths in, in old-age homes. Uh, the same in, in, uh, in the US, in New York, they were overwhelmed with the system. Initially, they also only um, captured and reported cases from those hospitals, but then also now acknowledge that there are many more deaths that happen outside of the hospital. If you look at Ecuador, uh, shockingly, you know, bags of dead bodies are, are, uh, are put on the streets at night. They are also possibly not reported. So unfortunately, we have underreporting both for the deaths as well as for milder cases worldwide. Now, how do we standardize the way uh, to count the fatalities so that we can understand how the virus works better? All the issues that you sort of laid out there sort of point to the picture that it's incredibly difficult to do so at, the, at present. It, it boils always to the same point, more testing, more testing, more testing. Dr. Wildersmith, I want to talk about um, Japan because Tokyo has reported a, a daily high of more than 200 new cases. Do you see a decline in numbers anytime soon for Japan? <laughs> So there's always a lag time between a measure that you put in place and then a reduction in cases. Remember, the, the lockdown in Wuhan was uh, 23rd of January, and it peaked by about 11 February, and only then you started seeing a decline. So we expect a lag time, but it will work. You know, these measures will work, and that is the good news. All right. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us this evening. We've been speaking with Dr. Annelise Wildersmith from the Lee Conscience School of Medicine at Nanyang Technological University.